let's take a look at an introduction to confidence intervals, an extremely important concept in statistical inference. Confidence intervals are based on sample data and give a range of plausible values for a parameter. For example, we may be 95% confident that the population mean mu lies in the interval minus 0.2 to 3.1, in which case the interval minus 0.2 to 3.1 would be a 95% confidence interval for mu. Or we may be 99% confident that the population standard deviation sigma lies in the interval 2.5 to 13.4, in which case 2.5 to 13.4 would be a 99% confidence interval for sigma. An important point is that we construct confidence intervals for parameters, and so the interpretation of a confidence interval will always relate to a parameter. Here mu is a population mean, a parameter. And here sigma is a population standard deviation, a parameter. We never construct confidence intervals for statistics, so we will never have a confidence interval for x bar, say. That is simply not how it works. We construct confidence intervals for parameters. We may use a statistic to help us get a confidence interval, but we do not construct confidence intervals for statistics. Confidence intervals always relate to parameters. Associated with the confidence interval is a confidence level, here being 95% and here being 99%. This means we can be 95% confident that the parameter mu actually lies in this interval. We'll see as we work through the methods in greater detail that we can pick this confidence level to be anything we would like. I could have picked this to be a 99% interval, say, but the result of that would have been a wider interval. So there is a trade-off between the confidence level we pick and the width of the interval. And for most purposes, we feel that a 95% confidence level is a reasonable choice. So 95% is by far the most common choice of confidence level. Let's look at an example of something that appears in the media very frequently. Polling organizations often conduct polls investigating the public opinion of how the president is doing his job. And these different organizations publish a presidential approval rating. Suppose in a telephone poll of 1,000 adult Americans, 430 said they approve of the way the president is handling his job. These 1,000 people represent our sample. And in our sample, 430 said they approved. So we're going to call P hat the sample proportion. P hat is the sample proportion, and that is simply the proportion of people who say they approve. So 430 over 1,000, which is 0 0.43. The sample proportion p hat estimates the population proportion p. p is a parameter, and its value is unknown. And the sample proportion is a value we get from our sample. And so in our case, that was worked out to 0 0.43. Here the parameter p is the proportion of all adult Americans who would say they approve if contacted by the pollsters in this manner. It is an unknown quantity, and we are trying to estimate it. An important question for us is how close is the statistic p hat likely to be to the parameter p? The sample proportion p hat of 0 0.43 estimates the population proportion p. But p is an unknown quantity. So is it still conceivable that p is 0.92 or 0.04 or 0.56? What are the likely values of p? We're not going to be able to say with certainty how close p hat is to p, because p is an unknown quantity to us. But we would like some way of expressing how close we feel this p hat value is to the true value of p. And the way we choose to do so very frequently is through a confidence interval. We often express our uncertainty in the true value of the parameter with a statement like, the poll is believed to be accurate to within 0.03, 19 times out of 20. First note that 19 out of 20 is simply 0.95 here. And so that's the same as a 95% confidence level. And what we're saying is when we're about to draw a random sample from the population of this size, that we are 95% confident that the sample proportion p hat is going to lie within 0.03 of the true value of p. This 0.03 is sometimes called the margin of error. 
And so p hat plus n minus 0 0.03 is going to be a 95% confidence interval for p. And in our case, that's going to be 0 0.43 plus and minus 0 0.03, or in other words, if we carry out the addition and subtraction, 0 0.40 to 0 0.46. And this is a 95% confidence interval for the parameter p. And we can be 95% confident that the true value of the parameter p lies somewhere in this interval. And as we work through the concepts in a little bit greater detail, we're going to learn why we can say within 0.03 and 0.95. Many statistics have sampling distributions that are approximately normal. In large part, this is due to the central limit theorem. But in these cases, the interval will be of the form point estimate plus and minus the margin of error. And we're going to use mathematical arguments to come up with the appropriate margin of error in these different situations. Not all confidence intervals are constructed in this manner, but many of them are. For any given problem, there will be two main issues. We'll need to use an appropriate method to construct the confidence interval, and then we will need to properly interpret the resulting interval. Properly interpreting a confidence interval is very important in statistics, and there are some subtle issues associated with that, so I'll look at that in greater detail a little later on.